Hello and welcome to the Breaking Yarn Podcast, episode 13. Today is Sunday, July 18th, 2021. My name is McKaylee. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and this is my podcast where I talk about crocheting, knitting, and yarn dyeing. You can find me online at breakingyarn.com or anywhere on social media at Breaking Yarn. So today I have a few works in progress to share with you, a future cast on, and a few shop announcements, and also just announcements in general. Um, so let's just jump right into it. I'll start with announcements. Um, so right now, happening right now until the end of August, it's the Breaking Yarn Birthday Cal, Cal. So it's a crochet along or a knit along. And um, all that you need to do to enter is to post your finished objects using breaking yarn or my patterns or both into the Ravelry thread. I'll link that down below. And um, you just post your finished objects there or you can use and or you can use the hashtags on Instagram. It's hashtag breaking yarn birthday cal K A L and breaking yarn birthday cal C A L if you're crocheting. So I will um, randomly choose winners from both Instagram and from Ravelry at the end of August. So make sure you get your posts in and your finished objects in. That is so exciting to see. Um, all of the projects that are being worked on right now using my yarn and using my patterns or both. It's so exciting for me to see that. So I really appreciate everyone who is joining in on the make along. I wanted to announce that I want to do a another giveaway on YouTube when I hit a thousand subscribers. I'm getting close. Um, I think right now I'm close to 600, so I only need a couple more hundred to get to a thousand. And so if you would share, share this video or any of my past episodes is fine to um, uh, any kind of social media or share it with your friends or just share that you are watching my podcast so that I can grow. That would be so exciting and I am so happy to do giveaways and I love being able to do that. So um, that will be the next one will be at a thousand subscribers. So let's just jump into my projects. So the first one you've seen before, but I'm carrying it in a different bag. This is a little dumpling bag and it was tie dyed by my friend Teresa Fuzzy Whatnots. And it is perfect. I will tell you why I've been using this bag um, for socks because I can walk around. I can walk, like go on a walk in my neighborhood and knit at the same time with this bag. So it just fits perfectly on my arm while I'm knitting and it's not too heavy or awkward. It doesn't get in the way. It's awesome. And it keeps my yarns all contained nice and neat. So this is what I'm working on. I am um, still working on my sock. I don't think I had started it last episode actually. So this is the first time you'll see what pattern I'm using for it. Um, I shared a skein of yarn from my stash with my friend Leah and she sent me a half skein from her stash and we are making um, our own little share pair socks and so this is the color that I sent to her. It's this cute little mint green color and then she sent me this like purpley See if you can see that it's like a purpley with like blue speckles and like a few other color speckles in it um and i am doing the pattern the rainbow connection socks let me show you the front of it it has a really nice detailing and i'm really enjoying this pattern and then on the back it's striping and then I did a contrast heel in the color that Leah sent me stitch as uh, heel um, slip stitch heel flap heel turn and the gusset and then I'm using the yarn that I dyed um, for the 
um, cuffs and the toes. But this pattern is by K of the Crazy Sock Lady. It's called Rainbow Connection Socks. And I feel like this pattern is perfect for two 50 gram skeins because of the way that it uses up the yarn. Um, it's a really fun pattern. It took me a little bit to memorize it. I think probably about six repeats. And then I was like, okay, I got this. Now I can read what row I'm on with what yarn I'm working with and just kind of what the stitches look like. I'm able to read where I'm at now. And so now I don't have to look at the pattern, which is really nice. Um, I did 15 rounds for my cuff in a two by two ribbing. Um, like I said, I did the contrasting heel and the yarn that Leah sent me. And then I will do the toe to match the cuff on the other end. I am using my Chowgu red lace um, needles. These are um, the Twist Minis in their fur socks. And I like to use the three inch cable on my right side and my two inch cable on my left side. So technically it's 10 inches, but I just feel like it's much more comfortable for me as I'm knitting it. I'm a thrower and it just helps to have a little bit more of a needle tip to hold on to for me. So those are my first socks. Last episode, I don't believe I had started them, so I started them after I recorded last time. But I'm loving how they are turning out, and I can't wait to get these ones done. So, my next work in progress is one you've seen before, but you haven't seen what bag it's in. This is a very special bag that I did. Let me show you why. Oh. <laughs> this, okay, so Jenny from Mountain State Stitches did some wholesale bags for me. She made me a few of these um, in this white bull denim and then contrast my lining. This is the Elements um, periodic from a periodic table as the um, contrasting fabric and I added the words I am the one who knits it's a play on words from Breaking Bad um, Walt says I am the one who knocks and I just decided one day I was like you know it would be cool if it was I am the one who knits and then I can use it for breaking yarn um, so I just changed the words to be I am the one who knits and it's a Breaking Brad bad reference if you're a fan of that and then on the back I added my logo so these are um, done on vinyl I actually got a Cricut um, you can probably see that in my background a little bit it's the Cricut Maker 3 I decided if I'm gonna get a Cricut I'm gonna get the best one that's on the market so that I could do lots of fun things with it and I have had a lot of fun getting to know that machine and how it works and all of that. So this is my new project bag. I do have a few left of these in the shop actually. So if you go over to the shop right now, Breaking Yarn, you'll see it's under Notions. Um, I also have a smaller version. This one is in a different fabric. It's um, organic or I don't know, it's a chemistry structure formula. That's what my husband said. Um, he is, um, he was a biology major in college, so he knows that stuff. But um, yeah, so this one is lined with a nice blue. And I just felt like they were very like sciencey and like Breaking Bad like, so that's why I chose these fabrics. But it is a little bit smaller of a bag. I would say that this one you can probably comfortably fit five skeins plus your project in it pretty easy and this one is probably like one to two. I wouldn't do more than two with your project but maybe one would be more comfortable so it is a little bit of a smaller bag. But so those, 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 those are those are those. <sighs> So inside this bag is a project you've seen before. I am working on my Beak Street tee still. 
and here's a picture of it. It's by Bridget Papio, and this book is Vertex Color Block Projects by Knit Picks. I have this link down below the video um, where you can get the whole book or you can get just the Beak Street Tea pattern. And this is my progress. Um, it's getting pretty long. Okay, so this is the back panel. I think I mentioned it last time that I started with the back panel on purpose because I had never done intarsia before and I didn't want any of my big mistakes to be on the front, if there were any. So I started with the back panel. Um, you start at the bottom and work your way up doing intarsia um, color blocking for the red and the stripes and I loved that it was so fun and then and this is knit flat I think I said that but it's not in the round so I'm prilling on the back side um, which is fine I don't really mind it and then now I'm working on the cap sleeves so it kind of just like goes like up and connects and then there's just like a little bit of a, a like a seed stitch ribbing on the sides so it's not see there's a seed stitch ribbing at the bottom so that will also be at the top and the sides so i'm getting really close to being done with the back panel and my goal for this is to get this done before the end of the Breaking Yarn Birthday Cow um, so that I have a finished object too. I can use it as motivation to get it finished. I'm using a progress keeper. I don't know if you can see that. It says I am the one who knits. I also have these in my shop. They're little round wooden discs. They're about one inch. In diameter and it has a um, lobster I'm um, not lobster um, lever back um, hook on it to hook onto the knitting or crocheting whatever as a progress keeper and the colors so I'm using um, bleeding out in my quarter round fingering base and then I'm using Jane Margolis in quarter round and Lily of the Valley in quarter round. So this is the same color palette that she had on the pattern and I just loved the way it looked. I love black and white and with red. I think that looks really fun. So I'm um, moving along on that. Hope to have, I hoped to have this panel done by this podcast, um, but it didn't happen. So, and that's okay. I have a few other things happening, so um, it's okay. It's just a deadline for myself. But that's my Beak Street tea. I'm excited to get that one um, going. I really want to be able to wear it. So my next work in progress that I have is in a bag that I was using for my um, stash sharing with my friend Leah. This is housing a new enamel pen for my shop, Breaking Yarn, also available in my shop now. And I started, okay, so I got this yarn from Anna of Zebra Yarns. She makes self-striping um, yarn, and this particular set was black and white, which I love the way it pulled while winding it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> There's like chunks of black and chunks of white. This kind of looks like, I don't know, some sort of famous pattern that I'm blinking on at the moment. Um, but it came with this little red mini that kind of looks like a bleeding out mini. But I loved this combo, obviously. I just showed you my Beak Street tee, and this is a very similar thing. And I thought, how fun would it be to have socks that matched my Beak Street tee? So I got that from Anna. And I did a seed stitch cuff 
and then I started with the striping. Um, I was hoping that I could do that to really match my sweater, and I haven't really seen anybody use seed stitch for a cuff, and I'm kind of wondering if this is why, because it's kind of like not very structured. I don't know. Um, I'm new to sock knitting, um, as you guys know, and it's kind of like flaring out a bit. It doesn't like, obviously, it, since it's not a proper ribbing, it's not like pulling in and like keeping a structure and stuff. So I, I think I'll knit a little bit long, more and see how it fits. If it like looks funny on my leg, I might take it out and just do a proper ribbing. But I thought that would be so fun to have the seed stitch and then the striping so that it could properly match my Beak Street tee. But I'm not sure if I like how that is looking. Um, it's not the yarn's fault, okay, I'll just say. This is um, the Zebra colorway from Anna from Zebra Yarns. And it's lovely. It's a 75-25. Um, I think it's just the this. And then also I've been playing with what size needles to use and right now on my stash sharing pair and on this one I'm using a US 2 which is a 2.75 millimeter and I'm wondering if that might be part of why it's kind of flaring out a little more like maybe I need to use a smaller needle just on the cuff for the seed stitch um, before going into the striping, like maybe that's making it kind of flare out a little bit too. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but again, I'm gonna knit a little bit more on it, try it on and see if it's like flaring around my ankle or my leg, then I may um, take it out and do something different. But I thought that would be fun to have matching socks for my Beak Street tee. And I had actually ordered an additional cable an additional five inch cable for my um, little chow goo set that I have so that I could have two socks going at the same time. Who am I? I don't even know who I am anymore. I'm like knitting socks and then I'm like realizing it's kind of hard sometimes to have a pattern sock because you know it takes a little bit more concentration and you don't just get to like knit in the zone. You have to like kind of pay attention like okay what am I doing? And so I'm seeing the value in having one pattern sock with one vanilla sock on the needles. And um, I think it's kind of crazy that I am seeing that now, but I am. And so I wanted to have this sock going so that I can easily just pick this project up and knit if I just have a few stitches here and there that I can knit on. Um, but I was originally gonna participate in sock week. I had ordered this cable in more than enough time. It was on Prime too, so I should have gotten it within a couple of days. And it didn't ship for like a whole week and it didn't come until Thursday. And so I was like, well, sock week's out because I don't have, I had already started my other pair and so it wouldn't have counted. And then I didn't have this one on the needles because I didn't have a cable for it to do the right sizing. So anyways, I didn't get to participate in sock week this year and that's all right. I will try again next year, but I don't know. We'll see how this works out. This will be an interesting little experiment if nothing else. Okay. So my next work in progress, I guess my last work in progress, and then I have a future cast on to talk about. Um, I showed this last time and I know I said I wouldn't share it every time and I probably won't for a while because I'm working on my Muscleboro hat from Isolde Teague. And this is where I was last time. So in two weeks, I only knit like two inches and that's because this is my easy, I only have two minutes to, you know, knit five stitches type of project. And I'm really not in any rush to get this done 
or anything. I'm really taking my time and just enjoying having a vanilla thing um, by my side that I can pick up and knit whenever I want um, or whenever I have a free moment, I should say. Um, I am using an experiment yarn that I dyed up. It's actually a mop color. Um, it's this gorgeous pink, fuchsia pink, and it's in a slub base. So this is 90% superwash merino wool, 10% nylon, and it has these little nubbies every so often um, that are spun into the yarn. So it's a different texture. I really wanted to see how it would look in a muscle burl hat, and um, I'm thinking it's kind of fun. It has like, you can just see like it's a little more like on the messy side, I guess. But a lot of the nubbies actually end up being on the inside of the hat, which I actually don't think it'll be a problem for this pattern at all because you actually tuck the right side in to itself. And so I'm not, all those nubbies aren't going to be like against my head or hair or anything. So only the ones that are on the outside, which is not as much as the inside. So I don't think that'll be a problem. And I probably won't share this one every time because I'm like two inches for two weeks is not a lot, obviously. So it's just a pick up and knit a few stitches, you know, de-stress or if I'm in a meeting and I can do that, um, then that's what I'm doing. And this is housed in a bag by Carrie of Stolen Minutes. So I have one future cast on that I'm gonna work on. Um, I am going to, I don't think my friends watch this, but I'm gonna knit their baby a sweater. So I'm gonna knit him a sweater and I decided to, I found a pattern, it's called um, Good Old Raglan and it's by Twisted Knitwear. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's like just what I was looking for. I just wanted a very simple pullover sweater to knit and I decided, and I wanted to do DK. I don't wanna do some fingering weight for a baby sweater. So I'm doing um, DK and I'm gonna use up some scraps. Okay, so this ball is like a big mess, but this is my gray matter colorway in the Swish DK. It's a big mess. I've used it for many different projects and swatches and things, um, but I have another little one here as well. So I'm thinking this will be my main color, and then I wanna do a few stripes, and I'm gonna do Crystal Meth, also in the Swish DK. I'm gonna do Walter White, Jane Margolis, and hazmat suit. So I have some of these left over from when I did my painting brick sweater. And um, also I have a little bit of gray matter left when I did my Mesa Verde cow. So I wanted to use up these. I think this will be more than enough for like the main color to like start here. And then I will do some striping, simple striping with the gray in between, just at the bottom and maybe on the arms or on the sleeves, I should say. So that's what my plan is for that. I'm currently holding the yarn in my bag by Fate's Thread, my little Dr. Seuss bag. And that's that, I hope to get that started. Um, I think he's due in early September, so I would like to get it done um, before then if I can, so maybe I can do my goal would be to get this done before the end of August for the make along maybe too, and then my Beak Street tea. Those would be my two goals to get those done before the end of August. I think I can do that. It seems pretty reasonable and I have about six weeks left. So we'll see, as long as I don't start any other like projects or socks or like rush to get those done or anything, I think it'll work out okay. Um, I did add four more skinny mane, uh, skinny manes. <laughs> oh, I did add four more mini skeins into my shop in my colorways 
So those are Marie Schrader, Hank Schrader, um, hazmat suit, and Walter White. So I added a few more colors from my colorways into the mini skein. So now these are available on my shop. They're $5. And be sure to be following me on Instagram or Facebook or on my email list because I um, just ran a promotion on these any purchase gets you a free mini skein. Um, but that will end today at midnight so you won't be able to get that um, unless you already took advantage of that. And thank you. Um, That's about it. I don't think there's anything else to share. Um, I'm recording a day late, later than I normally do. Um, yesterday, I got the opportunity to take my daughter to the zoo for the first time here in Albuquerque and um, meet up with a friend who has a baby around the same age. I think my daughter is less than two months older than him, so that was really fun to get to take them to the zoo. And I normally record my podcast on Saturday mornings, um, but I felt like, you know, you can't pass up going to the zoo with a new friend. And since we're starting to kind of slowly integrate back into society, um, that felt like a good activity to do because it's outdoors and um, you can kind of like stay to yourself and you don't have to really like, you know, be in crowds or anything like that. Um, so it felt like a good activity. It was a lot of fun. The kids had fun. So um, that's why I'm recording a day later than normal. Hopefully um, I don't have any issues getting it edited and uploaded for tomorrow at yeah, 7 a.m. Mountain uh, day Daylight Time. So mm, I think that's everything. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I really appreciate you being here. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it, and I like to read every single comment. Share this video or any of the past episodes that you like with your friends. Once we get to a thousand subscribers, I will do another giveaway. I haven't quite figured out what that will be, but I'm sure it'll be great. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.